There's a lot of misinformation out there about how to find cheap flights in 2024 the right way. So let's actually test out these controversial tips to see what's working today and what's pure myth. And if you think I'm full of crap on any of these, leave me a comment and let me know. First up, to round trip or not to round trip. We've been led to believe that buying a round trip ticket is like buying in bulk at your favorite wholesale club. Better deals, right? Wrong. Well, sometimes. Nowadays in air travel, airlines usually price legs independently because let's face it, not all who wander want to return. One-way tickets offer flexibility and sometimes that flexibility can cost the same or even cheaper than round trip bondage, especially with low cost carriers. Within the US, two one-way tickets on an airline often cost exactly the same as a round flight trip, at least on major routes. For example, here's a round trip flight from Miami to Los Angeles for $198, and if you search for them one way at a time, it's $99 and $99 coming back, and so it equals the same. With international flights, there's a little bit more variation. Major airlines tend to charge more for one-way tickets, but many budget airlines do not. Also, when you buy one-way tickets, you don't necessarily have to use the same airline in both directions. Oftentimes, you can save even more money by buying one direction on one airline and the return flight on another. Searching for one-way flights on a bunch of different airlines might sound like a headache, but there's actually some handy sites that do all the hard work for you. They automatically puzzle piece together flights from different airlines to find the cheapest combination possible. I'll link to one of the most popular tools below. And if you have airline miles or points, you also might find cases where it's cheaper to book one direction paying with points and the other direction paying with cash. Long story short, yes, round trip tickets can be easier to manage, but the idea that round trip is always cheaper is a big fat myth. I'm sure you've been there searching for flights and every click seems to drive up the price. So you switch to incognito mode thinking that you outsmarted the system. But have you really? Let's run a test. On one side, regular browsing. On the other, incognito. Same flights, same times, searched 50 times. As you can see, the prices are the same. In fact, after 20 searches, I actually opened up new windows just to retest and the price actually dropped. This is true whether you search on a flight search engine like Google Flights, in OTA like Kiwi, or directly on the airline's website. The truth is, Prices fluctuate due to airline algorithms responding to demand, not because they see you eyeing that ticket to Thailand. And when airlines change their prices, there also can be some lag time between the time that those prices update on the online travel agent sites. So when you first search on an OTA, you may actually be seeing an outdated price. If the price later goes up, it may feel like they're watching you, but in reality, the prices are just syncing with the new updated prices that the airline put out. At least, that's how the experts explain it. What do you think about incognito mode? Comment incognito works or incognito BS and let's see who wins. I once thought that Tuesdays were my lucky booking day until I discovered the truth. And the truth is that many companies actually have data and studies on this, including Google and Expedia and Hopper, just to name a few. The problem is, all the results have different conclusions. For example, Expedia's research says that Sundays are the cheapest, but Hopper flight pricing data says the opposite, that Sunday is actually the most expensive and that Wednesdays are actually the cheapest. So what gives? Well, we're way past those caveman days when technology restraints limited airlines to updating the prices manually a few times per week. Back then, there probably was a cheapest day to book, but now airline prices Pricing algorithms are complex beasts, instantly crunching numbers on passenger behavior, competitor pricing, oil prices, supply and demand, internal promotion campaigns, and more. It's a cluster truck of constantly changing variables, not a weekly flash sale. So don't wait for a certain day. If you see a good deal for your destination, 
book it now. Before exposing some even bigger myths, I made a cheat sheet of all my best money-saving travel hacks that I've picked up over the past eight years of traveling. So make sure to grab that down in the description. You may think that budget airlines are the best option for your wallet, but before you trade legroom for savings, let's crunch the numbers. Ticket prices on budget airlines can be super tempting, but when you add the fees for baggage, choosing your seat, and sometimes even printing your boarding pass, is it really that much better? Sometimes yes, but sometimes no. Here's a quick example I found, and this one isn't even as extreme as some other ones I've seen in the past, but here we're looking at a flight, a one-way flight from Fort Lauderdale to Bogota, and on Spear Airlines, the budget, the budget carrier, it costs $103, but doesn't include any luggage. And if you, so you only get a small personal item bag that fits underneath your seat in the plane. And if you want uh, to get a carry-on, for example, here's their extra luggage prices. So in total, Spirit is $103 if you have just a personal item, $169 if you have a carry-on, and $228 if you want a carry-on and a check bag. But if we compare that to a full service carrier, like down here, United, for example, it costs $126, but it already includes the free carry-on. And so even if you're just traveling with a carry-on, it will be cheaper to go with United over Spirit in this particular case. And if you wanted a checked bag as well, it would be even more cheaper to go with United over Spirit. So before you book that budget ticket, make sure to tally up the true cost. And it's not all about price either. You also want to consider how often the budget airline flies the route that you need. Because if it gets canceled for some reason, it may mean a long and expensive wait for the next flight, which may not go out for a few days. Full service carriers, on the other hand, usually have more more routes and partnerships with other airlines to help you get rescheduled and to your destination faster. Like if you've learned something new so far and want to see more videos like this. First, let's explain skip lagging or hidden city ticketing. It's when you book a flight with a connection and then ditch the last leg because it's cheaper than buying the direct flight. Sneaky? Yes, but illegal? Not exactly. While this is against airline policies and they can penalize you by canceling your trip, nixing your frequent flyer miles, or banning you from future flights, it's certainly not a crime. Airlines have taken legal action against websites that promote these hacks. But as a consumer, there is no law prohibiting you from missing your flight connection. That would be silly. No matter what airlines will have you think, skip lagging is not illegal. That said, use this strategy with caution and make sure the savings are actually worth the risk. If it's an airline that you use frequently, might not want to piss them off. Next up, we have the early bird special. Is booking your flight as early as possible really the way to the best deal? It's ingrained in our deal-seeking brains that earlier equals cheaper. This may hold true for concert tickets or Black Friday promotions, but flights, that's a little bit more complex. I put this question to the test with a little experiment. Here we're looking at round trip flights from Chicago to Rome and we can get a quick look of all the different prices here in Google Flights. And so we see that in the coming months, the cheapest prices are hover around $500. And as we go out further and further in the summertime, you can see that obviously the prices go up a little bit. But surprisingly, if you keep going out next October, which is almost a year out, the prices jump again to over $1,000. And so you can see if you buy too early, you're gonna end up paying more. This happens for several reasons. For one, airlines know that really early bookers are often business travelers traveling on company dime. But also, it's just hard for them to predict what the demand will be like so far in the future, and so they just default to more expensive prices to be safe. Prices tend to drop within the sweet spot of between one and three months before departure of domestic flights, 
or between two and eight months before departure of international flights. So unless you're flying during peak holiday season, you may want to fight the urge to lock it down too early. Are all in-flight extras designed to fleece you? Sure, there are some upgrades that frankly aren't worth the paper your boarding press is printed on, but this isn't always the case. I made this mistake on my last budget flight from the Maldives to Thailand. During my online checkout, I just quickly checked no for all the extras assuming nothing was worth the extra money. Well, that came back to bite me when I was starving on the flight and realized I had rejected the $3 in-flight meal. Three bucks is nothing compared to the price I paid for the flight and it's five times cheaper than any meal I could buy in the airport. It's actually kind of ridiculous why they don't just charge everyone $3 more and give everyone food but whatever. The same goes for paying for the exit row or the big seat on budget flights, especially if you're a tall person. I am as guilty as the next guy for trying to save every penny possible. But when your knees are smashed in the seat in front of you for 14 hours straight, that extra $50 upgrade will start sounding pretty good. Of course, the price varies from flight to flight. What about paying for in-flight Wi-Fi? Well, if you're using it to work, and by working, you can earn significantly more than the price of the Wi-Fi, then I'd say it's worth it. Although I personally just like to download offline work before I leave. It's all about weighing cost versus comfort. Sometimes an extra 20 bucks can make the difference between arriving with pep in your step or having to drag yourself off the airplane like a zombie. I'm tired. How many more hours do we have? Like 20. So are all extras a ripoff? I'd say no. Over the past couple years, I've received hundreds, maybe even thousands of comments asking how to find the cheapest flights for certain routes, which leads me to believe that many people think that flight hunting needs to be complicated. This is a myth. And in this video,